Okay, let's talk about HIE and MRI today because this is a question that comes up often when people are trying to make sense of what happened, trying to look at what the crystal ball might look like for their child's outcome and what MRI can play into that picture. And MRI is a picture. It's a structural image of the brain. Um, and it can and does change over time, especially with um, newborn brains and especially with HIE. A little bit of back history about studies with MRI and HIE. Uh, the biggest uh, that came out most recently is the HEAL study analysis of MRI and looking at what is most predictive for outcomes. And the study showed that for mild and moderate outcomes, that MRI was not a good predictor um, and was only right about 50% of the time. And then uh, it was most useful to predict severe outcomes, which is not a surprise because if you're looking at a um, you know, global brain injury, uh, more on the severe classification side on MRI, that um, it is more likely to correlate to a severe outcome. Um, however, we know from our own community that that um, is not always accurate either. And that's what makes HIE so difficult uh, because there are multiple causes um, and there are such a variety of outcomes. Um, we only currently, obviously people know, only have one approved therapeutic and that only works for some kids. So with all of that, um, it's not clear cut. It's not something that um, is easy to tease through, but we're going to talk through a little bit more about MRI and HIE um, with a study that just published that I think is really interesting to share. And we're going to talk about the term pseudonormalization um, and why some families may uh, get a MRI report of having a normal MRI, but whose children still go on to have impacts from HIE. So we have the study that just came out, um, insights from serial MRI in neonatal encephalopathy in term infants. Um, serial, uh, they did a regular, a regular cadence of MRI for babies that underwent cooling, um, suspected to have HIE. Um, you have to use the term neonatal encephalopathy if it's just suspected HIE, despite being HIE its own pathophysiology. But because uh, it is so complex of causation and sometimes they cannot root out if it was uh, right away, if it was genetic, metabolic, et cetera, um, they just put it under the umbrella of neonatal encephalopathy. But HIE is called out specifically in the study later on. Anyway, all that to say, um, Terry Ender, Dr. Terry Ender is under this one. Um, she's a co-author on this and she is one of the top researchers of MRI um, in the world. Uh, so really good team working on this. So they studied babies and they, you know, talked about how early MRI really kind of drives, um, you know, how families are communicated about prognosis, um, but the problems with um, looking at just early MRI and that the full impact from HIE may not be fully apparent until after one month of life. Um, and so timing of MRI is really, really important. And a lot of times you can do best standards, but because HIE is what is called heterogeneous, where there are many babies who have uh, HIE happen in utero and some at birth, some after birth. Um, it's really tricky many times to determine if the timing is appropriate or not with the three to five days that they recommend um, MRI for HIE. So um, looking at, you know, is there a call to action to um, improve the standard of care and do later MRIs that would be valuable for prognosis for families. Um, and so this is really the impact of what they did of uh, looking at that there's currently few studies that look at the evolution of brain injury um, from, you know, see hypothermia in HIE. Um, so which does not help um, people understand the potential neuroprotection of like when you can intervene um, to improve outcomes. And that's really a huge focus right now in neonatal HIE research is looking at the timing, looking at um, which babies would qualify for what, um, and this theory of cocktails and ice, where you're looking at is it a therapeutic mixed with hypothermia, and which babies would benefit from what when. So uh, obviously, anything that we can learn more to extend that therapeutic window of improvement is really, really important. Because 
you know, currently um, cooling, you have to start within six hours. Um, the study that is enrolling babies right now with the novel peptide is looking at having the first dose within 10 hours. Um, but there's other things that they're looking at that are uh, clinical trials of different interventions. There's metformin that could be given within the first three to six months um, and show improvement. So there's just all sorts of things that we need to know more about. So an MRI always comes up. <laughs> so again, you know, we know that's the standard of care, um, but timing is really, really important. So and looking at what we can learn, and they did this pilot study of five um, MRI time points of three months of age. Um, and that's what they learned was that, um, you know, it was more obvious about that initial injury and was more helpful at a month versus the initial one. Now let's talk pseudonormalization. And this is an important term because um, it might not be one that a lot of physicians use with families, but they're, I think, using it more and more. We just had another family ask about this. Um, and I have heard Dr. Danielle Barber, who is on our medical advisory board on our board of directors. She's a pediatric neurologist. I have heard her use this term several times. Um, and so I asked her to break it down for our families. So this is what she sent back, which is looking at different signals on the MRI. So um, the signal, because again, they're sending um, signals through the magnet to the baby's brain to create that um, picture of that structural image, um, you know, to see the full extent of the brain injury. Um, and the maximum time that they're able to do that is between three to five days after it happens. And DWI is the diffused weight imaging, which is the type of MRI that is used. Um, she shares that if you wait seven to 10 days, the MRI can look normal, even though if you had done it earlier, you would have seen injury. And that is called pseudonormalization. Um, it's just a part of the technology and the limitations and the combination of baby brain development. Um, and you can wait longer to see the injury on a different sequence. So not DWI, it would be a different sequence of what they're looking at. Um, so she's saying if you're in the seven to 10 day window, you're better off waiting a few more days. But here's the tricky thing with HIE is if you have an in utero injury, you don't know sometimes when those happen. So if you have in utero and you have that normal pseudonormalization, say you have a normal MRI, um, because you're in that pseudonormalization period, it might not be accurate. So this is what the question is, is can we do better by um, researching when the, you know, a month after the baby is born and seeing if that's a better MRI that would give um, a better uh, predictive value for prognosis. I know this is kind of a long video. I hope it's helpful. Um, again, these things with HIE are not clear cut. Um, very little is clear cut with HIE um, because there are so many different factors and so many different causes. So the term heterogeneous, we've used it. You'll see it in the literature. It's because there are so many causes. Uh, one of my favorite resources that I would recommend people go to is the Q&A that we did during HIE Awareness Month this year with Dr. Mark Scherer. He's a fetal and neonatal neurologist. He talks about causation. He talks about all sorts of things that um, families ask about, um, how much is preventable, um, how you can potentially tell, what are the factors of, you know, causation with HIE, um, and the way that he uh, counsels families on causation. It's really, really helpful. Uh, so here's a shot of that. So this is the uh, clip from our YouTube channel, and you can go there and find under our playlist, uh, Medical Advisory Board Q&As, um, you're going to learn a whole lot more. I'm going to try to pull like helpful clips and put them onto TikTok. Um, there's a lot of repurposing of content that we're trying to do. There's so much that we um, put out on different channels, so I'm trying to build this one as well. Uh, hopefully it's helpful. All that to say, this is uh, a nine minute video now about a concept um, that is very in depth and I hope it's helpful um, and you know, keep coming with questions um, because we will keep working to answer them.